But you see, what uh, bothers me a little about this account, and incidentally it seems to confirm from the inside many of the people's uh, fears, worst fears, about the way in which American policy is conducted. For example, you say that all sorts of things were done in the field, for example, plotting to overthrow uh, the Syrian government and others, without the State Department being uh, very fully informed about what you were up to. The State Department didn't want to be informed in that particular instance. If it had been informed, it would have to have told us not to do it. And therefore you didn't inform it? The State Department practically asked not to be informed in this case. We did inform the State Department, and uh, as you, well, you've read the book, uh, you know this, this case where uh, uh, simply we, we, it, we, it was headed to us that we had best shut up about what was happening in the country, and if Husni Zaim, uh, the case in point, you are talking about the Syrian Zayim. case, yes. we were through the Syrian If uh, Husni yes. Zaim wanted to have a coup, and if his intention was to get rid of the corrupt uh, government and establish a democratic government, we should leave him alone and stay out of it. And that was the State Department policy, but in fact, you very largely organized, directed, I mean, you personally, but you're among the team who did it, organized and directed this coup. Exactly. Yes. And then when Secretary Dulles was in office, uh, you say that he was taking the high road, but the working levels at the State Department and the Pentagon were well advanced down the low road. That is a totally different policy. Uh, carrying on subsidiary policies almost totally inconsistent with the Secretary's. Do you think that's a, a useful way of conducting a foreign policy? Keith, uh, I'm not going to make a moral judgment about this. You're asking me the way things are done, and that's what my book is about. My book is not about, uh, uh, complaining. My book is not a great outcry about how things are done wrong or right in the American government. I'm simply describing the way things are done. Yes. It is true. Now, let me finish. It is true that in many cases we would sit around in our attics of the State Department and we would have long discussions. Our government does not interfere in the internal affairs of a sovereign nation and we meant that from the bottom of our hearts. And then we'd say, but in this is one case where we have to. And so we would have to try to decide how to do what it was we said was against our policy to do. And we did, in fact, interfere in internal affairs of many sovereign nations. I'd, uh, and, uh, I'm, I must say we don't do it anymore, I mean, but there was a time. I'm not asking you, see, to make a moral judgment about this. What I'm saying is that looking over the period that you've reviewed in your book, do you think that this was a useful and successful way of conducting foreign policy or not? Do you think, in fact, this gaming business worked out and paid off? Well, now, there are two parts of the gaming business. One part is uh, the, the main purpose of war games, peace games, business games, any of those games, is simply to predict whatever one else will do. In that regard, uh, games have been very, very satisfactory. Uh, the other part of the game is actually to play it by making moves so as to bring about uh, uh, the outcome that you want. Mm -hmm. Now, in that, I would say that we've had successes and we've had failures. I would say that on balance, our government has, since the Cuban incident, our government has just about eliminated this sort of thing. I think, I, I have no way of knowing, I'm not in our government anymore. But, but I would, I would, I, my feeling is that this is just about, is decided that on balance this is a bad thing to do, and it's better to let a country stew in its own juice. If it has a corrupt leader, let them have it. It's their tough luck. If, they got, if the country, the people in the country, don't have what it takes to get rid of a corrupt leader, the hell with them. Let them keep him. And so this means, really, that this whole experiment, which in many ways you describe, is a phase of policy in America which, in your view, is over because it didn't pay off. Yes, I would say so. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Fantastically fast. 